tell it, Charlie. What have we got? Uh, what we got is a wrap on the knuckles from the complaints commissioner, so we want to look at a couple things. This is the grow-up investigation? Uh, apparently, the original officers involved, uh, constables Jan Ferris, Cindy Winters, and Harry Jones, have been cited as being uncooperative and obstructive. So. What's the focus? Well, these three, they were acting out of line with the chief's policy regarding the grow operates. They weren't following procedures? No. And this uh, Constable Ferris, she's apparently a bit of a hothead bossing the others around. And we've also been hearing that she was maybe showing some signs of uh, mental imbalance previous to the grow operate. We'll see what you can find there. What kind of timeline do I have on this? Start today and report to me at the end of the week. Right. Good to see you moving up in the world, Charlie. I've interviewed all three of the constables, Ferris, Jones, and Winters. Were they forthcoming? To a degree, Jones and Winters were, yes. Ferris was less so. Did they admit to not cooperating with the Complaints Commission investigation? Yes. And did they say why? Winters and Jones both said they refused out of a loyalty to Constable Ferris, who they thought was being unfairly singled out for attack. And Constable Ferris? And Constable Ferris was very reluctant to talk with me and was very guarded throughout her interview. Did we get an assessment from our psychiatrist as to her readiness to return to active duty? He doesn't believe the constable should be reinstated. Is Constable Ferris aware of any of this? She seems to be very aware of feeling isolated. I'd almost be ready to recommend that she be put under preventative psychiatric care, at least a period of observation. Can we do that? Yes, we can. I found him. There. Why don't you just tell us everything you saw, Mrs. Waters? You mean besides my dead husband? But just everything else you saw, please. So, blood everywhere. The phone was ripped from the wall, his favorite scotch on the desk. What else could you possibly want to know? Why was the phone ripped from the wall? I don't know. You mind if I take a look? I already went over all this with the other detectives. We out of your hair in no time, ma'am. <sighs> ma'am, what time did your husband die? Sometime after 11. What about strange phone calls? Receive any of those lately? Weird interference, static, anything like that? No. No. Mrs. Waters withholding information from the police is a capital offense. <clears throat> Some parts of the world, I'm sure. A couple of weeks ago, uh, there was this. This what? I woke up one morning, I heard Ben in his study. I thought he was talking to a woman. What made you think that? Because he kept calling her Linda. The thing is, I picked up the other line, and nobody was there. Ben was talking to nobody. There was nothing. Just static. Did you ever speak to Ben about this phone call? No, I should have, but no. Did he ever say who Linda was? What difference does it make? There was no one on the other end. Thanks for saving me. No problem. I mean, she's nice, but God, she can talk your ear off. Oh, sometimes I feel like I'm the only smoker left in Los Angeles. So, how have you been? Okay. Uh, hey, I was trying to lay low so I wouldn't say anything about the party. <laughs> I mean, you know me. It doesn't take much to get me to talk. <sighs> you all right? What? Cheated on Jonathan. Oh, don't say another word. I didn't mean to. God, just Claire. The... This is a big mistake. Seriously, Claire. He's an amazing guy. He's the best thing that ever happened to you. I mean, the way he cares for you, other women would line up for. I know. Good. Because you can't get back trust. 
And you can't take away pain. <laughs> I will never look at a plush toy the same way again, ever. <laughs> they were harmless. Hey, it wasn't your leg that got home. <laughs> Pole dancing, perverts. Can you believe you do this for a living? Oh, hold on. It was a compliment. We're all really proud of you, Suey. Yeah? Yeah. Look, I lied when I said that uh, I was the surprise. Mom sent you something. Aha, uh -huh. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Give it, give it, give it. Plane ticket? We want you to come back home. The things are getting so much better. I've got this great job. You could do the con just as easily from Toronto, right? I suppose. And Mom thought you could use your old office at the back of the house. What? You'd have your whole family all around you. You guys still think I'm the screw-up. I didn't say that. Well, why say it when you can fly all the way from Toronto? Uh, to Sue, I came for the... Alex, you're such a liar. I went through your like, bag and there was no itinerary, nothing. I knew you were going to react like this. We just don't want you to blow this amazing opportunity. Why did I blow it? Come on, Sue. Remember Byron? He adored you. He was smart, funny. He asked you to marry him, and you slept with his best friend. It was an accident. You sabotaged your speechwriting job for the premiere? It's a typo. And then there was the spelling bee? That was great, Byron! Face it, Sue. Whenever you get a chance to do something great for yourself, you... We just want to save you. From you. I'd like you to stay at a hotel. I don't have any weapons. Don't sell yourself short. You can put your guns away. We share the same cause. We're here for Dylan Hunt. Your cause? To help Captain Hunt save the Commonwealth. I'll lead a cell of collectors who believe he will succeed. That he very well should. Really? Then why you stop them from taking him? Stop them? <laughs> I gave them the idea. It was my plan. Right. Great. Well, then we're all cool. Pish believes the answer to the Dylan question is no longer to kill him, but to turn him to the other side. Since persuasion would never work, they opted to break his will. Of course. Mm. The Nietzschean would understand. I made sure Beta A was the chosen method of finding the weakness in his armor. 